In this recording, we're going to take a look at how to install the Curity Identity Server. You can download this from developer.curity.io. Go to Downloads. I'm going to do this on a Mac, so I want to download the Darwin version. And I'm going to do this through the um, download this through uh, the API, so essentially a curl command. This is because if we download the package this way, uh, we avoid the file authorization uh, in macOS Catalina. So after it's been downloaded, we can untar this. This will then give us a uh, install script. So we simply execute the installer script here and accept the license agreement. I'm going to upload a license file later, so I'm just going to skip this step here. We're going to do that in the UI and set a password for the admin user. And we have the option here to uh, uh, protect the sensitive parts in the data store with a unique encryption key. So I'm going to do that. And we also want the web UI to be enabled. And that's it. The installation is done. If we look in this repository here, we have now IDSVR, which is essentially where the installation is. And in here we have essentially a mimic of the Linux file system. So if we go into bin, that's where we're going to have some executables. We have the the shell uh, and as well as the um, server. So the IDSVR here is to start the server itself. So now we'll see that the server is starting. Once we get here, uh, the server is started, but we can see that no valid license has been found. So we can upload that through the web UI. If we then uh, go to a browser and go to localhost, the port for the server is 6749. And then we go to the admin page. This is where we can then authenticate and log in with our admin user that we set up during the installation. Now we get prompted to run through the, the basic setup wizard. And so if we click run basic setup here. We can upload an existing license or import it from the dev portal if there's one available there. I have one here. I'm just going to drag and drop it in. Click next. We can now select a data store, a database. I'm going to use the one that's part of the Initial setup here, you can choose something different. We don't need to set up an email provider or an SMS provider for now. We have existing SSL keys that are generated, so I'm gonna, just going to use those, but you could upload your own uh, existing ones here. Um, we're going to use the default signing key and enable all the capabilities and all the flows here in this installation. And once we commit this, all the changes will be applied and we got a system set up. Now we can look at making a very quick configuration in this system here. So if we go to profiles in the authentication service, uh, we can set up an authenticator. So we, we have a couple to choose from here. There's more available on our GitHub repository. I'm going to use an HTML authenticator and name it HTML1. Click Next. And then we can choose the default account manager and default credential manager that was created as part of the setup process. 
After that, we can look at the token service and set up a client that we can use. Give it a name, client. Choose the capabilities and I'm going to choose the, the code flow capability for this client here. I'm later going to use OAuth tools. So if I click this add redirect URIs, it's actually going to add in the OAuth tools redirect URI for it here. Um, and we can also add the OAuth tool tools as the allowed origin. Uh, this is the authentication method for how to authenticate the client. So I'm going to use a secret. Uh, we have a generate button here so we can generate a password for that that we can copy and use when we configure the client in OAuth tools later. We define which authenticator we want to use for this client and we're going to use the HTML one that we just created before. And we'll select the OpenID scope to be provided by this client as well. That should pretty much do it. Um, I need to make some configurations so that ngrok can work uh, for me. So I have to set a base URL, which is going to then be my ngrok proxy address. And I'm going to set the protocol to HTTP because ngrok will handle the SSL for me here. I'm also going to enable Webfinger so that we can uh, discover the information and URLs. We'll see that when we configure OAuth tools. Now it's time to commit this changes, commit the, the um, authenticator and the client and all the other changes that I've made. And Curity should be fully set up now. And with that, we can open up another tab and go to OAuth tools and configure the environment in here. So click environments, since I enabled web, web finger, I can then point this to my ngrok proxy address. And click discover. And with that, the rest of the endpoints uh, will be resolved. So we have all the endpoints that are exposed by my security server. Uh, we can now go in and configure the client in here. And so the name of the client was client. The secret is what was randomly generated and I copied so we can paste it in here and then we enable the code flow for this client. We can now start a new flow and choose uh, amongst uh, many different flows in here, but we only have the code flow enabled for my client. So we'll select that. We have to choose the environment up here before we can hit the drop down and get the client. We can then here choose to request the OpenID scope. And then we should be able to start the flow here by clicking run. That gives us the authentication of the HTML authenticator. I don't have any users, but since we have this hooked up to our data source through the account manager, in Credential Manager, we can actually create an account here. So I'm going to quickly create an account. It gets created in the data store. We can now return to the login and log in with that user that I just created. We now got um, a code and we can redeem that code. And now we have an access token, we have a refresh token, and we also have an ID token because we requested the OpenID scope. And that's a quick intro on how to install the Curity Identity Server um, on a Mac system. The process would be similar on Linux. Thanks for watching.